Welcome to Curatorial Clips, short videos by the curators at the Freyland Museum of Art and faculty colleagues on works in the collection in areas of our expertise. I'm Tyler Jo Smith, and I'm the professor of classical art and archaeology in the art department at the University of Virginia. In this curatorial clip, I'm going to talk about the Athenian black figure crater. The Athenian black figure column crater is currently housed in the Freyland Museum of Art at the University of Virginia and was acquired in 1988. Although not attributed to an artist, the crater has been dated based on style to the late 6th century BCE. With a duel on one side and a wedding scene on the other, this impressive and well-preserved object encourages us to focus on the connections between its two iconographic themes. The figures are not named by inscriptions, but it seems likely based on known parallels with other Greek vases that each of the two sides is related to the Trojan War and thus to the poems of the epic cycle written by Homer between 750 and 700 BCE. The large open vessel stands 35 and a half centimeters high and formerly belonged to the collection of the second Marquess of Northampton at Castle Ashby in England. It was published by Martin Robertson and John Boardman in the Corpus Vasorum Antiquorum of that collection in 1979. Auctioned by Christie's along with other classical antiquities from Castle Ashby, the Greek vase made an unexpected detour from London to Nairobi en route to central Virginia. The theft was documented in the Wall Street Journal and luckily the crater eventually found its way to Charlottesville where it arrived in good condition. Before considering the decoration on the crater, let's pause to understand how to look at a Greek vase. Greek vases are ancient artifacts uncovered through archaeological excavations. As a result, they must be studied in a highly systematic manner. Although many, such as this one, display beautiful decoration on their surfaces, it is important to emphasize that the ancient Greeks would never have considered this object to be a work of art in the modern sense. We begin with the shape. The shape is a crater. Then the function. A crater was used for mixing wine. The place of manufacture, the ancient city of Athens. The technique, the black figure technique, which comprises black figures on a lighter colored background with incised details and added color. The date, which is approximately 510 BCE. The artist, in this case unknown, and now we shall, now we shall turn to the decoration and the iconography. One side of the crater is dominated by a battle scene with two female spectators. At the center of the composition, two well-armed males are engaged in a duel, while a third warrior who is still armed has fallen to the ground between them. The upright male figures strike typical aggressive striding poses each with one arm raised to hold up a spear and the other arm supporting a shield. Meanwhile, the fallen figure, presumably injured, supports his weight on one elbow as he struggles to lift his shield. With one last gasp, he uses what little strength he has left to point his spear in the direction of the enemy. This well-structured central composition is framed by two draped women who stand facing the fight and making gestures of encouragement and alarm as they watch the events unfold. It is important to note that each woman makes physical contact with the soldier closest to her. The painter is indicating that each in her own way is also taking part in the struggle. Based on comparisons of this scene with others in Greek vase painting, it seems highly likely that the episode being shown here is the duel between Memnon and Achilles over the fallen body of Antilochus. The story of their confrontation is told in the Ethiopus, a lost epic poem. Memnon was the son of the goddess Eos or Dawn and Tithonos, a Trojan prince, and as a child had been relocated to Ethiopia by his mother. A Trojan by birth, he is seen on vases in the presence often of Africans, an overt visual reference to his adopted homeland. He is said to have killed Antilochus 
the son of Nestor and friend of Achilles. A distinctive feature of many representations of the Achilles-Memnon duel, including this one, is the involvement of their mothers, Eos and Thetis. It is their animated presence here that helps to confirm the event being shown. There is also the fight between Achilles and Memnon, whose mothers stand by them, to quote Pausanias. Interpretation of the iconographic function of the mothers in the scene on vases has been tied to their divinity, which serves to elevate the conflict and the strength of the opponents. Also to their ability to focus the viewer's attention on the epic theme and to express the dramatic details of the narrative, including fate, irony, and violence. The second side of the crater depicts a wedding procession. Based on our reading of the duel on the other side of the vessel, there's every reason to believe that this is a representation of the marriage of Peleus and Thetis. Following their difficult courtship and an extravagant ceremony, the union of the mortal and the sea nymph resulted in the birth of Achilles, the greatest Greek hero of the Trojan War. Here the bride and the groom are riding in a chariot pulled by four horses. Also present, is a draped male musician playing a stringed instrument called a lyre who moves in step with the couple and the two well-draped women who face them. One of the women holds up torches in both hands while her companion gestures in the direction of the chariot. If the scene on the crater is an extract from the wedding of Peleus and Thetis, then the lyre player must be Apollo playing music to accompany the procession. The two women may well be the mothers of the happy couple Endius and Doris, one of whom carries the torches needed to light the ceremony. In antiquity, the wedding procession, which moved from the bride's family home to the groom's house, was an integral part of the ancient ceremony. Those details are known based on both literary and visual evidence. Although the groom did not always take part in the procession, black figure vase painters regularly include the groom standing in a chariot next to his bride. She tugs at her veil using a conventional gesture associated with the ritual unveiling, known in Greek as the anacalypteria. The future parents of Achilles, Peleus and Thetis, are identified by name on the Cephalos Dinos in London, and again on a vase in Florence, shown here, where they take part in the wedding procession. In fact, on several Athenian black figure vases, the names of many figures are inscribed, such as Apollo playing the lyre on the vase in Florence on the right, and the groom Peleus, who greets his guests in the example in London on the left. It is also quite possible that vases of this type, decorated with wedding scenes, might have functioned within the context of the occasion itself. They might have been used for the mixing of wine during a wedding banquet, or even given as wedding gifts to the bride and groom. In such instances, Peleus and Thetis, whose nuptials we witness, would be viewed as mythological paradigms. Finally, let us consider the visual and thematic program of the vase as a whole. In order to do so, we will begin top down by looking at the vessel from above in order to share the perspective of a person standing at the crater to collect wine from it. The frieze of animals decorating the rim at once process and confront in pairs. Although not moving in a unified manner or direction, there's a certain logic to their arrangement. Each facing pair represents a pending animal combat, comprised of an advantaged winner, a feline, and a disadvantaged loser, a stag. The themes of aggression and conflict, procession and mobility, detectable amongst these animal groupings are identical to those occurring below in the multi-figure compositions on both sides of the vase. The most obvious link, however, between the two figure decorated sides of the black figure crater is the epic hero extraordinaire, namely Achilles. The marriage of his parents on the one hand was a necessity that culminated in his birth the death of a friend and the slain of an enemy on the other both foreshadow his demise. The juxtaposition of the two sides can also be articulated by a series of more general terms. Birth and death, peace and war, happiness and sadness, celebration and violence, processional movement and static action. Furthermore, 
The addition of the mothers on both sides of the vessel allows the viewer to comprehend the separate yet combined narratives temporally, i.e. by generations and by chronology, and on an additional emotional level. By portraying the maternal figures with the same dress and similar gestures, the painter highlights their collective role as mothers and mourners and encourages the ancient drinker at an ancient symposium, a drinking party, or those at a wedding banquet to do so as well. I hope you have enjoyed this curatorial clip highlighting the Athenian black figure crater at the Freyland Museum of Art. Thank you for listening.